Hello everybody, Silas back today. It is absolutely beautiful out here. I think it's about 52 degrees right now. A little bit of a breeze, but the sun is shining. Just a wonderful day out here. I am on a mission today. Today's mission is, is I am going to go explore an area on my property that I have never explored before. Now I've owned this property for a little over three years and I've got some drone shots of it and I've flown around a little bit and I've, I've dug through the place pretty good, but there's a couple areas out here that I've never really explored that thoroughly. It's really thick trees, it's kind of hard to get in there, but I've got a little bit of time to kill today, so I thought, you know what, I'm just gonna go do it. Plus, it's kind of a two-fold mission. I need to find the property line, where the uh, corner of my property is. On the other side, well, let me back up a little bit. Back in the 1800s, when this property was established, the way they marked corners of properties was with stone obelisks. So they actually had an actual cornerstone. Now, I know cornerstone, when they build a building, is a little bit different term, but it's a cornerstone that marks the corner of the property. Obviously, they're not mounted in the ground or anything like that. Just very, I mean, they're in the ground, but not that much. Well, that was 150 years ago. And the stone obelisk on the other corner is long, long gone. On the front side of my property, years ago, when they built the blacktop through there, they actually found the, the corners of the property and they marked them with steel stakes like they do now, way underground. That way they can find them with their little fancy detector things. But the back side of my property, can't seem to find where the corners are. And the only way to do it is to triangulate off of the blacktop here and a blacktop that's about four or five miles that way. And to do all that is gonna be very expensive. So if I can find that stone obelisk, even if it's knocked over or something like that, it will save me a ton of money. And I believe if I'm looking at the map correctly, it should be back here in these trees somewhere. Wow, that's kind of crazy. There's still snow back here. Here in this shady spot where it doesn't get much sun, we got, I think, almost 10 inches of snow here about a week and a half ago. I was actually out of town when that happened. And then it's rained about every other day since then, so I really can't believe there's any snow left, but just a little bit left here. It must have drifted up pretty deep in this area. I never did get to come out here when the snow was real deep. That would have been kind of cool to see. But anyway, this is the furthest I've ever gone in this area. They used to use this area for a target practice range. You can see this mess here. I need to clean this up someday. But there's this big hill of sand right here, so it really makes a good area for that. That way, if your bullets go through, they don't go flying off and hitting who knows what. Plus, there's no houses that direction at all. So, if a bullet does go flying, it's not that big of a deal. But this hill is kind of an anomaly. Somebody had to have made this hill here because it's a really big hill right in the middle of nowhere. So, I'm guessing somebody had to have piled all this up at some point through the years. I would say that it's probably about 15 feet high, maybe a little bit more than that. And you can see it's kind of a big area. It's been here a long time, that's for sure. There's some pretty big trees growing out of it. As you can see right there, that's a pretty good sized tree growing on top of this hill. But I've never actually gone down in there anywhere. And I guess it's kind of a threefold mission. While I'm here, I'm going to be looking for mushrooms as well. This is kind of a deer trail right here, so I'm going to try to take this. I should have took my overalls off, but I don't want to carry them with me, so I guess I'm going to have to wear them now. But it'll definitely be interesting. As you can see, this is why I've never come down here before, is it is really overgrown. Let's see what we can find crawling through here in these overalls is quite the challenge. I'm really regretting wearing these, but we're making it. This morning, it, this morning it was about 25 degrees, and so I had to dress warm, but it's warming up pretty good right now. Pretty obvious why I've never gone through here before. <laughs> this is a jungle deluxe. A lot of the areas out here back in the trees on the property are actually still accessible where you can walk through them. Sometimes you have to wiggle a little bit, but they're not this overgrown. Reason for that is, is because my property was a salvage yard for decades before I ever bought it. Now it was empty when I bought it pretty much. I filled it full again, but back in the day it was way more full than that. And even back in the trees, they had cars and parts and stuff like that. And so they had it pretty cleared out. But this area back here, they never really used this area. So this is decades and decades and decades of growth. Here we go, big old cottonwood. Maybe this will have some oysters or something growing on it since it's half dead. Something's been living here fairly recently. I don't see any fresh, fresh tracks, but uh, those aren't very old tracks either. Hopefully nothing's home right now. Let's see here. Anything good? Unfortunately, it doesn't look like it. You know, I've never really found many mushrooms out here at all of any kind, even inedible ones. I found a few inedible ones by a half-dead elm tree one time, but that's it. Looks like that limb there fell that direction, so we'll go around and see if there's anything growing on that. The flip side of that is, though, that we have been in a perpetual drought ever since I bought this property. The year I bought this property was the year the drought started. 
and it's never never picked up since. So all that snow we just got is gonna make a, a big impact, I'm sure. It's not gonna get us out of a drought, but it's gonna make a huge difference. Looks like something's been rooting around right here. Maybe an armadillo, hard telling. We're getting closer. I think we're getting pretty close actually. You can see there that we should be right on the spot here pretty soon. Should be right over there. What is this? Found something down here. Pepsi Cola. That's too bad that's broken. That's one of the cool ones there. Sometimes these have a date on the bottom of them. I can see it, I think 1949. Huh. You know, I might hang on to that. It's still kind of neat. Can't come all the way back in here for nothing. Gotta find some sort of treasure. According to the map, it should be right here. I should be standing pretty much on top of it. Now there's a fence over here, so that might be the property line. It might not, you never know. Sometimes people just build the fence where they know it's safe rather than accidentally move it over. Here's a blob of concrete. That might be something because there's no reason for that to be all the way back here. I do know that there's another piece of property close to me and I looked up the legal description on it because it's right up against my property and it said that two of the corners on it were marked with a slab of concrete. So I wonder if this isn't something like that. So this might actually be the property corner right here where this is at. That would be right on with where it should be. According to the map, it's actually right like right there, over that way about five feet, but uh, the map may not be 100% accurate because it's going off a of GPS and I'm way out here in the middle of nowhere. Of course, I say that, there's that piece there. There's another piece over here of concrete. So it's very possible that there was something cemented into the ground on the corner and at some point in time it was broken out and they just threw aside the cement so definitely it's going to be somewhere in this area right here. So that gets me a pretty accurate idea. That way I can see where the property line is off this direction. We're kind of on the edge of the trees now. Didn't really find any mushrooms, unfortunately. We'll go check some more trees here in a minute. Let's see if I can figure out roughly where that was now in relation from over here. It was right down over there. So right through here. And it goes straight off that direction. So yeah, that's right about where I was thinking it was at. It's right even with that tree right there in the middle, kind of that tree right there. The cactuses aren't looking too hot. I was really bummed out that that didn't work out better eating the fruit off of those. There's another old bottle. Is that anything cool? It's kind of interesting. Oh, it's broken. So never mind. I'll let the cactus have that one. What's that? Something blue. I'm just a piece of broken pottery of some sort. So it's pretty much right here. I was looking at the deal and it's right to this side of this tree. So it's right about there, about a foot over. Another piece of glass. What do we got here? Looks like it has an eagle on it and it says something about established 1870. So that's your clues. You got to tell me in the comments what that is. I have no clue. This was a landfill out here. A long, long, long time ago. But there's bunches of glass out here, and over on that side, there's a bunch of concrete and bricks, an old sewer pipe, the old clay, t uh, clay sewer pipe, stuff like that. What do we got here? Hospital use only. That's kind of interesting. Hospital size for hospital use only. Huh. Little pitchfork on the bottom. That's kind of creepy for a hospital. But yeah, that's kind of neat. I guess we'll hang on to that too. Now that's something I've never noticed before. There's a big old slab of, I don't know if that's asphalt or concrete or what this is right here. Huh. Definitely interesting. I've never noticed that before. Bunches of glass. There's a green bottle there. There's a little tiny brown bottle of some sort here. That's kind of interesting. There's an old bottle there. That's nothing interesting. What's left of a toy ball down there. That's been here a while. Some more glass bottles over here. Doesn't look like anything interesting. But yeah, all through here, there's just stuff everywhere. 
the remnants of an old probably cream jar of some sort. You just never know what you find. And every time you come out here you find more. Just because it, some of it gets buried in the sand and other comes out of the sand. And there's a glass bottle. Looks like there's a pretty healthy deer trail running through here. Pretty well established. I think it's just deer. Yeah, I don't see any other tracks. Well, that looks like that might be a coyote track there. Nothing's been on in the last day or two at least. Remnants of an old car tire right there. That's been there a long time. It's kind of neat how Mother Nature reclaims that sort of stuff. There's still a car tire there, probably been laying there for a hundred years, but these cactuses growing up around it. Oh, check this out. Here's another example of nature taking back over man's stuff. You got this brick right here, and it's got that plant growing out the center of it. <laughs> That's really cool. The previous owner, years and years and years ago, came out here and dug this pit, thinking he was going to have a pond back here. As you can see, it didn't exactly hold water. <laughs> Believe it or not, we we're right close to the river, but it's a really big slope. And so the river, the water table, is down pretty low. Even on wet years, this doesn't really hold water. For this to be able to hold water, a guy would probably have to go down another 10 feet or so. And the hole's already almost 10 feet deep. Well, probably not quite that deep. It's probably about 7 feet or so down here at the very bottom. Because with these boots on, I'm just right out under 6 feet. And it's a little bit higher than my head. So yeah, but it's probably about 7 or 8 feet deep right here. But I do know if you look at the, uh, what do they call that map? The topography or whatever it's called that shows you the different elevations the actual river is about 25 feet below this back field back here now if you go up to the very front of my property that's even higher above the water table but the good part about that is is that i'm not in the floodplain so insurance is a lot cheaper what do we got here old wash tub or something like that maybe a pot or something pretty rusted out tons of deer tracks Here's a bunch more miscellaneous pieces of metal and broken glass. That would have been a neat bottle there if it wasn't broken. Not sure what that is. Oh, it's still got the lid on it. Huh. Not that interesting though. What's, what's this? See, that's just laying right on top of the dirt. How in the world did that get right on top of the dirt? But look at the shape of that bottle. So that's pretty cool. I'll hang on to that. But, you know, it was probably buried in the dirt for who knows how many years. And just recently, there was probably one of those armadillos or something like this over here digging, looking for whatever, threw it out on the ground. It was probably buried in that hole right there. That's why I love coming back here on this part of the property. You just never know what you're going to find. It'd be really cool if I could find some uranium glass. I've never been able to find any of that out here, but... That's kind of a neat bottle. Vix. Yeah, it's got to be armadillos digging these holes like this. That's the only thing I can think of that would dig holes just randomly all over the place. Well, it looks like there's another bottle or something down there. What do we got here? That's kind of interesting. Yeah, we'll hang on to it. Why not? My hands are already full. And then this area here is just clear full of stuff back in the trees. Overgrown blocks of cement. Actually, I think that piece right there was one of the first videos I ever posted on my main channel. First or second video I ever posted. That was in that video. I haven't been back here since then. That was, man, almost three years ago now. Time flies. But yeah, you can see it's just solid chunks of cement and bricks. Random trash. Not really trash trash, but like demolition type trash. Metal. You name it. This was a dumping ground for a lot of years. There's really nothing a guy could do with all this stuff. I mean, a guy could come in here with an excavator or a bulldozer or something like that and get it all out of here, but man, that'd be a lot of work for not a whole lot of reason. Don't really need this area. One time, oh, a couple years ago, I came back here and I thought, why in the world would I pay for dirt when I can just come back here and just dig some out myself? I figured I've got plenty of dirt and sand and whatnot. I can fill in my own roads with that. And so I came back here and I dug one bucket of dirt out of this spot right here. And there were so many chunks of metal and bricks and <laughs> chunks of concrete 
and you name it in that one bucket that I said, you know what, that's why I'm going to buy dirt and not actually use what I have already because, man, it was a nightmare using that out in the road. I had to spend an hour picking stuff back out of it. And there's this old building that I rescued off that farm cleanup I did a year ago. Still haven't done anything with it since I put it in right here. I'd really like to do something with that, make it into a cabin or something like that, put a wood burning stove in the middle of it. Pretty neat. It's going to take some work to fix it because I, I kind of tore it up getting it out of the trees, but it was either that or wadded up in a ball and shove it in the iron box. So I figured tearing it up was better than wasting it completely. You can see right there, I tore it up pretty good in that spot. One of these days I'll get to it. I just wish I wasn't so busy all the time with 35 million other things. Looks like a fiberglass Volkswagen hood down here. <laughs> That's random. Yeah, this is the area that I was at back when I thought it would be kind of cool to own this property someday. Years ago, about five years ago or so, maybe it was even six or seven years ago now. This area was clear full of cars right here where we're at now. And these little scraggly trees weren't here then. And all the way over there, there was probably, I don't remember how many cars there was here, well over 100 cars. We bought them and we brought excavator in here and smashed them all and hauled them all out of here. I remember thinking back then, boy, it sure would be cool to own this place. Didn't think it would actually happen. All right, guys, it is lunchtime. I'm in the junkyard cabin. I decided, you know what? I'm going to cook my own lunch today. So today I've got some rice. I've got some seafood. I think it's going to be pretty good. So let's get busy cooking. That is going to be way too much rice for one person, but that's okay. This is a really handy cooking setup. This little stove right here just has a little attachment attaches to these cans and some legs that you put on the can. That way it's more stable. Then I have this little uh, pot and pan and plate set here. Super handy, super portable. I can just take it with me wherever I go. This is going to come in really handy. I just get so tired of going out and getting fast food or having to drive all the way home to eat lunch. So I figured, you know what, I'm just going to start bringing lunch with me. I actually just bought this rice today on the way out here. Otherwise, I would have split it in half when I was at home and saved half for later. I really need to get me a set of tongs. That'd make this a little bit easier to do this. I don't remember what all's in this seafood mix. I know it's got shrimp. I believe calamari and scallops, if I remember right. The trick is, is I want to cook it about halfway and then I'll add the seasoning and the sauce. For the seasoning, we're just going to go with a little bit of garlic powder, a little bit of salt, we'll stir that up real good, get that mixed together good. I like the flavor of seafood, so I try not to put too much seasoning. And then for sauce, I found this Thai sweet ginger sauce. This stuff is delicious. I've used it at home a few times now. It's really good stuff. There we go. Now we'll go ahead and finish cooking this. We may have to reheat the rice a little bit. I don't know how long it's going to hold in that little pan. Hold a tea, I mean. I need an actual table in here. This thing's kind of low. I'm having to hunch over. Hurts my back a little bit. I really want to get to work on this again this winter. For me to load the actual stove with wood and to get it hot enough to cook on and all that stuff would just take so much time. And then it would be sweltering hot in here. Because it's pretty warm out today. So this is just super handy. I'm, I'm really looking forward to going on some camping trips with this setup. I ordered a new backpack that's a little bit bigger than the one I have now. That way I can carry all my camping gear and cooking gear and everything in it together. Yeah, let's heat this back up just a little bit. It's still warm, but it's not warm warm, you know? What I really should do is get a second little stove, and then I can cook two things at once. Obviously, I'm not going to eat all this rice. That's way too much rice. There we go. Nice little bit of rice. And then we put this seafood glaze over the top of it. Oh, this smells so good, guys. It smells absolutely delicious. This is way better than anything McDonald's has, that's for sure. 
I haven't even tasted it yet, and I already know. Now my mouth is water, and I am ready to chow down. I need to get me a plastic plate, because uh, this metal one's a little bit warm. Ah, <laughs> it's actually, I have to hold it like this. It's still pretty hot on the bottom. And now the test. Did I cook it good, or did I cook it not good? That is absolutely delicious. Now, it's not as good as fresh seafood. Fresh seafood would obviously be way better. This is frozen, but I'm in Kansas, so it's a little bit hard to get fresh seafood. You actually can get it pretty fresh. They'll overnight it to you, but it's just very expensive. So here in Kansas, you pretty much got to deal with having frozen food. But still, for being frozen seafood with instant rice, that's pretty delicious. Hands down better than anything you would ever find at McDonald's. Plus, it was way cheaper. I think the bag of rice was... It wasn't very much. I think it was $2.25 or something like that. And then the seafood, I believe, was $7, but there was enough in a bag to cook probably at least three plates full. If I would have split the rice in half, that would have been less. I would be looking at like four bucks right here. That was fantastic. And for dessert, I've got an old-fashioned pumpkin pie. These aren't the greatest pies in the world. I like the big ones better, but that would be wasteful. This is just the right serving size. Well, no mushrooms, and we didn't find exactly where the, where the property line was. I was sure hoping we would find something more definitive, but we did find some neat treasure. Old Pepsi. Not sure what this is. This is kind of a unique bottle here. Just the way it's shaped. I'm sure this is some sort of perfume. This is some sort of cream. This is a Vix. And then this here, I'm not entirely sure what that was either. This is that hospital jar. But still, not bad. I doubt there's any value to these here. I mean, maybe a couple bucks for all of these put together. But still, it was fun to find them. And with that, we are done with this video. I know it's not a very long one. Kind of a, kind of a quick, just out in the trees and get back real quick type of deal. I didn't have a whole lot of time available. I was basically on my lunch break, so now I've got to get back to work. But I figured why not take you guys along with me. I need to start posting more stuff on the second channel to, to keep it rolling good. Coming up soon on the second channel, I ordered some stuff. As soon as it gets here, I'm going to be making some pretty cool videos for you guys. Or at least I think they're going to be cool. Maybe you guys won't think they're cool. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> at the very least, I'm going to have fun making them. So I guess at the end of the day, maybe that's all that matters. So stay tuned for that. As always, I hope you have an absolutely fantastic rest of your day. Remember to get out there and find an adventure, even if nothing super interesting happens. We'll see you next time.